The following program is sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network. Welcome to today's Home Remodeler. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're learning more about the painters and allied trades. We'll begin by heading to their training center to meet with Adam Holmes to learn more about the apprenticeship and training for these trades. Next, we'll catch up with Dave Branson from the Building and Construction Trades Council of South Central Wisconsin to hear about their annual career fair for local high school students and teachers. And finally, we'll visit one of Wisconsin's most iconic structures, Camp Randall Stadium, to see what the painters and allied trades are doing on the job with business agent Jeff Meerhoff. So we have a lot to cover today, and we'll get started right after these messages. Part of the construction of any home or major commercial building is the finishing. It's usually the last trade on the job and also the one responsible for making everything you see look good. So let's begin today's show at the Painters and Allied Trades Training Center to learn more about who these craftsmen are, what they do, and how they are trained. All right, Stu, over here we have one of our apprentices, Joey, here, who is uh, priming the wall, getting it ready for uh, the next application after that. Well, this is a really nice training center. I like all the mock-ups here. And what I've learned about the building trades is most of them have training centers like this, and that's why we're fortunate to live in this state. Absolutely. We have a lot of highly skilled, highly trained workers. Absolutely, that's true. Almost every trade these days has uh, their own training center. As a matter of fact, uh, the Painters Union, we have two training centers here. Uh, we have this one here in the Madison area. We also have one in the Milwaukee area, so we cover both major metropolitan areas of the state. And just a little bit that I've seen so far, it's been a learning experience to me. I myself, and I know a lot of people, take painting for granted, and everybody thinks they know what a painter does, but it's a lot more yeah, highly trained, highly skilled to Absolutely. do it right. We train guys in doing everything from painting houses, commercial buildings. We train them how to wood finish, hang wallpaper, we do industrial applications, bridges, water towers, you name it, we do it. And it's more than just painting that's done in your trade. Yeah, we have many trades that are affiliated with us. The drywall finishing is affiliated with us, so the finishers are our members, glazers are our members, and a lot of people don't know necessarily what a glazer is when they hear that term thrown around. But if you've ever driven in a downtown area, anywhere where there's big glass buildings, that's what a glazer does. They put in the glass and everything that holds the glass in. Boy, whether you're talking about the glazers, the drywall hangers, paper hangers, painters, they're trades that we take for granted, and that's really a testament to the quality of training that they get. Absolutely. Because they do it right, and if it's done right, you don't have to worry about it. It lasts a good long time. It will last a long time. Okay, yeah. well, let's take this opportunity, walk through this, and, and get to some of the you know skilled areas here, and then get into the classroom a little later. Sounds good. All right, now over here, Stu, this is our wood finishing area. Uh, over here we have Ian, who's working on staining a brand new door. This is awesome. I mean, I love that you, you're providing real world applications for the apprentices with an instructor here so that they can learn the tricks of the trade. I mean, when we talk about trades, it always seems to me there's a lot of information that isn't so much book smart, right. it's more being passed on from one generation to the there's next. There's a lot of hands-on. You learn a lot by doing it hands-on and actually physically performing what you're doing. And so as I'm looking here, it's not only the techniques, but is it fair to say the, the brushes, the different equipment that you use? <laughs> Absolutely. There's different brushes you use for different products. One of the first things they need to learn is what kind of brush you use for latex paints, what kind of brush you use for oil paints, because they're different really? and not a lot of people that was no, a myth that they just no. wanted to sell different products. No, no, no. It really, it, really, makes it really makes a big difference on what you're using. I think about, hey, I'm building a half million, million dollar home. Who am I going to get to finish it? Because after all, the finishing that we're seeing here today, that's what's going to speak volumes to the quality of your house. Absolutely. If you bring in somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing, 
it will show. Now what's Dave doing over here? Dave is actually working on varnishing a door. This is the finished coat, the top coat, what people would equate to as the shiny coat that's on top of the wood. Sure, and you know, when you look at it again, it's the finish coat. It's the first thing you see when you come up to a house or enter a house or a commercial building. It's the finish on the walls and you know, highly skilled, highly trained workforce. That's what gives us the quality of life that we have here in this state. Yep. Now, that takes care of the wood finishing, but in here, this looks like, you know, it could be a bedroom, a den in a house. Is this where they get trained how to do, say, corner bead, for instance, on drywall? Yes, what we would do here is you'd put a corner bead around this and then you would actually take, we refer to it as mud in the industry, it's drywall compound, and you would smooth it out and make it a nice smooth finish. Sure, and so when they come in here, it's pretty intricate actually. I mean, they put it in. It really and is. And I've seen them in action and they actually mud it, let it dry, sand it down, then mud it again. Oh, and it's then a process. It. It's a three or four step process depending on what level finish you want to get. Because again, when you're thinking about this, this is what people are going to see. So this can speak volumes of the end result. Absolutely. We have to be precise. You got to leave a nice smooth finish on there or else every little imperfection in the wall, it'll show. Okay, residential setting as we mentioned. Yep. What happens in a commercial project? You're up 30, 40 feet. You guys have to deal with that as well. Well, let's go outside and I'll show you how we get up into the air and deal with those projects. All right, so like I was talking about, getting the heights is a very important part of our job. We come out here, we do our aerial lift training, we get the guys in the air, we get them to run the machines. Uh, it can be a lot of fun. Oh boy, so you know, you think about uh, drywallers, painters, all the allied trades, you don't think that there's equipment like this involved, at least I wasn't thinking that way. And when I see equipment like this, yeah, it's fun, but also safety must play a big role. Safety is huge. OSHA classes, CPR first aid, fall protection, scaffolding, we do it all. Uh, we train our guys to do all that kind of stuff properly. Uh, we wanna make sure they go home at the end of the night just like everybody else does. Sure, and we just saw some practical applications where there are hands-on training. Yep. I take it there's a lot of book work involved as There well. is book work, but some of that can be fun too. Let's go, I'll, I'll, I'll show you what we got. This is our more traditional classroom where our students do a lot of their book learning. Sure, so the book work gets done like you would think in a traditional classroom with an instructor. It teaching. does. It, yeah, it does. It's not just uh, book work now, though. Uh, thanks to uh, the Finishing Trades Institute, a lot of our curriculum is delivered online. And so the guys actually have their own passwords to get onto websites to do a lot of learning that way. And it kind of keeps the younger generation more in tuned. Sure, that's a great way to learn. Also a great way to refresh yourself going out on a job. You never know you, if you can, something you learn in the class, you don't remember, Absolutely. get online, Absolutely. refresh yourself. And this is, uh, this is what the kids really love this. And when I say kids, I mean apprentices, but they really love this. This is our virtual sprayer. I remember this from out at the trade show at the career fair. Yep. Uh, yes, I recall, I didn't do so good. It told me to hire a professional. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna take another shot at it? Yeah, I'd love to. If I recall, don't you just pick it up and it'll, if I remember, you just simply. Right. Get a little bit closer. And this is a great example of why you want to hire a professional. Absolutely. Yeah, not only does this train our guys in the proper techniques that it takes to, to spray paint, uh, we also do it in a green way where we don't actually waste any paint, uh, no harm to the atmosphere, no harm to anything by teaching them how to do this. And as you can see, I was working on my full finishing techniques. I didn't want to get sure. the proper mill thickness. Absolutely. Are you buying it? <laughs> Sure, let's go with that. Uh, this to me is a great example of how an industry, a profession, continues to evolve. And if I want to get involved, say I have a young child that wants to get involved, heck, even if I'm middle-aged and want to become a painter or one of the allied trades, what is your advice for someone in that situation? If you're interested, I would contact us directly. Uh, you can apply any time of the year, any day. Uh, you contact us and we'll kind of take it from there. And now if I'm accepted into the program, how does the apprenticeship work? Uh, it's a four-year program, okay? During that program, you're gonna come to approximately three years worth of schooling on about an every other week basis. So once a week for three years. And then I'm going to be working with a professional painting contract? Yeah, you'll be working on job sites, learning that way the other four days of the week. Oh, what a great trade. All the building trades are great to be a part of. And this has been really eye-opening. And throughout today's show, we're gonna learn some get out into the community and learn some more real world aspects. Great. But I appreciate you coming on showing us the training. Day. Anytime. Stay tuned. We'll be hearing about a local building trades career fair next.
In our last segment, we learned about the career opportunities for painters in their allied trades. We had a chance to visit their local training center and see how apprentices are trained to develop their skills and also in the classroom for safety and industry knowledge. Now let's meet up with Dave Branson to hear about the Building Trade Council's annual career fair for local high school students. Oh, Dave, it's a beautiful fall day. To me, it feels like there's football in the air and how appropriate. We're standing outside of the newly remodeled Camp Randall Stadium here in Madison. Yeah, Stu, it is a beautiful day and there's a lot of construction going on in the inside of this building too. Now on a major renovation like this, it really takes a lot of teamwork through all the building trades. It does, all the trades have a part that they're doing and everything has to be coordinated to, to make a structure like this come together. Now you're with the Building Trades Council of the Madison area? I'm with the Building and Construction Trades Council of South Central Wisconsin. I'm the director. And what does that council stand for within our community? We represent building trades unions in the community. We represent all of the construction trades. Our members live and work in the community. They, their children attend school in the community. We're a part of the community. I bet you like to see this type of development going on, and not only with Camp Randall Stadium, but all the iconic structures in downtown Madison. Yes, we help build those. Uh, we go in and try to help get the projects going. You know, when I think about it, without the building trades, you couldn't have all the science that is done here at this great university. I mean, we've been down at the Institute for Discovery. We've been at the microbiology building. We've seen so much development, and it speaks volumes to the tradespeople that we have here, we're really fortunate to have this highly trained workforce right here in Madison. Yes, we are. We've got a great bunch of trades here and they're all very skilled at what they do and work well together to coordinate the projects and make them come together. Well, you know, I've worked quite a bit with your council and what I really like is, is two things. First of all, you're really proud of what's going on here from a construction standpoint, but you guys look to the future and you care about the younger generation getting into the trades, especially with the careers in construction a trade show that you guys put on every year. Yeah, we do careers in construction every year. Next year we're doing it on Wednesday, March 19th at the Alliant Energy Center. And tell us a little bit about what that entails. With the careers in the construction, all the different trades are there doing hands-on experiences. Uh, so the bricklayers will be there and give students a chance to lay some brick. The iron workers have rebar there and they'll get their welding simulator out there. Uh, the operating engineers have a crane simulator that they bring in there and, and students can sit down and, and use a crane simulator and see what it's like to operate a crane. The painters will come in there with their painting simulator so you sure. can see the see how, how well you can cover the, the wall with a spray gun. Or how well you can't. I know I actually visited it and tried it, told me to hire a professional. <laughs> <laughs> I was the same way. Now, and the sheet metal workers, I know they're there. I think they're building little toolboxes. Yeah, they're building little toolboxes, and when they're done with the toolboxes, the students can keep those. And again, you talk about the students. This is for Madison area students, correct? And teachers? Madison area students and teachers, yeah. We notify all the high schools in the, in the area and invite them to come to the career fair. And again, it's free for them to attend. It's a great learning experience. What have some of the students mentioned and some of the teachers, what are some of the comments you're getting? Well, the, the students really enjoy it because they can get out there and do some hands-on experience. It gives them a chance to see what the trades are about and to get some experience at it. And the teachers really like it too because some of these students are interested and it gives them an opportunity to get out there and, and see what they'd like to do to try it out. It opens their eyes and hopefully opens some doors so that they can learn what a career in the building trades is all about and see that it's not just about hard work, hard labor. Sure, that goes with it, but it also goes with a great experience, great work environment. I mean, how many people can say that they actually worked on Camp Randall Stadium? That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is really cool. Now at this event, are the students able to talk to different personnel that are representing each trade? Yeah, each trade will have representatives there. The business agents and the training coordinators will be there. The students will have a chance to talk to the, the training coordinators and the business agents and find out more about the trade, uh, what the requirements are to become an apprentice, the training that takes place during the apprenticeship, and what opportunities there are in the trade. Seems to me that could be very valuable in helping you get a foot in the door. Yes, it is. It gives the students a chance to, to make contact with the trades, and, and it gives us a chance to, to make contact with uh, some people that will, in the future, will be skilled craftsmen like we are. Stick around, we'll be heading back to Camp Randall Stadium to see what the painters and allied trades are doing next, here on today's Home Remodeler.
Throughout today's program, we have been learning more about the painters and their allied trades and the role they play to finish our homes, schools, and businesses. We also heard about the annual Careers in Construction Day, held each year in March for local high school students. Now let's head back down to Camp Randall Stadium and meet up with Jeff Meerhoff from the Painters and Allied Trades. Oh, Jeff, this is an impressive project. And here at Camp Randall, this aspect of it's coming along nicely. Yes, it is, Stu. We've been here for about a year, year and a half or so on this uh, phase of the remodel uh, and renovation of Camp Randall. And uh, we're getting towards the end of it. And we have uh, three of our uh, trades on here today, uh, glazers, drywall finishers, and our painters. And you know, when I was talking to Adam earlier, out at the training facility, it's really you guys that make our city look so impressive because you come in and finish all the other construction work. Yes, that's why we are the finishing trades. We are the ones that come at the end of the construction and we make it look good. Okay, well let's take this opportunity to just quickly walk through, at least in this hallway, the drywall finishers. Let's start with them. What is their role in this project? Well, our finishers, their role is after the drywall is hung, they come in and their job is to basically make the seams look good. There's obviously seams here where the drywall's put together. They have to apply tape and two coats of drywall mud to make sure nobody sees these seams. And again, this is the preparation for the painting that's gonna take place. And personally, I've tried to do it. It sounds easy. It looks like it would be no problem to do until you get into it. If you don't have the proper tools, the experience, the training, it's gonna really telegraph right through the paint. And so you have to make sure it's done correctly, Absolutely. Right? Our finishers are the key step in the process. Our painters can't do the job unless our finishers do their job. So we have highly trained and skilled drywall finishers and that's why we do work all over the city of Madison. Okay, so on something again, this large a scale, there's a lot of drywall that needs to be finished off, that's for sure. Yes, Can sir. we move along and take a look at what some of the other ones are up to? Absolutely. Wow, it's just blowing away. I peeked my head in, saw Jerry doing some finishing. That looks like a veteran there. He was so fast. Yeah, I mean, that's that's typical of what uh, our skilled tradesmen can do. Jerry is a fantastic drywall finisher, and he's uh, one of the things that we do is we impart some of the knowledge that they do on some of our younger guys here, like Carlos. You see on the stilts, spotting some drywall screws. Sure, and you know, that's a huge part of the trades, whether it's the painters and allied trades or any of the building trades, it seems to be that mentoring that goes on. All the, the training gets passed from generation to generation. Absolutely, we couldn't do what we do without our skilled journeymen, training the guys that are coming up. We need that mentoring. I think of safety when I see somebody walking on stilts and Adam back at the training hall yes. there, he was talking about how they get thoroughly trained. Safety is of the utmost importance. Right, I mean, we couldn't do what we do and have the safety record that we have without the training that we do. Carlos is a very skilled drywall finisher and he has a number of years of experience at it and he makes it look easy, but not everybody can get up on a pair of stilts and walk around all the stuff that they're doing and see on the floor and everything without you know falling and hurting themselves. And that's an excellent point. It's one thing to be able to get up on stilts, which yes. personally I don't think I could do, but right. then to walk around a construction site like this and he feels right at home. You can see. Yeah, you can see he's very comfortable. And one of the things we have to do is we have to adapt and to be efficient on these job sites so we can get them done and on time and under budget. Yeah, and over here it looks like the glazers are just finishing up that window wall. Yes, dude, they're uh, putting the finishing touches on, a, it's called a curtain wall. And the glazers play a crucial role in any building project. They're the ones that have to enclose it so the rest of us can get our work done. Boy, you know, I think of that profession right there. You wouldn't get me up that high. I bet safety really comes into play. You bet. Like anything, we have to work safe. The glazers, they're outside. They're always at height. You'll see them on boom lifts. They have to be harnessed in, and they have the added issue of extra weight with all the glass that they have to carry and move around so they're extra careful because they have to be. So once the drywall has been finished off, time to paint? Yeah, you can see in the background we have Jason and Nick painting a wall using an airless paint sprayer and they're back rolling the paint behind the sprayer. Oh, look at that. And so there's two of them doing it. One sprays, one, you called it back rolling? Back rolling, yes. Does that give it a different finish or just a more even finish? It evens the finish out and it makes sure that the wall will be smooth. That's what seals the drywall. I see them having respirators on. Safety doesn't end with just heights. No, Stu. As you can see, Jason's got a protective suit on, and they both are wearing their respirators. Well, you know, earlier in the show, Adam was saying how 
the painters and all the allied trades. They're open for business. If anybody's interested in joining a trade like this, just give you guys a call and you might have an opportunity to work in an iconic structure like Camp Randall Stadium. Absolutely, Stu. Yep, we are. Just come out and talk to us. Well, you know, Jeff, I really appreciate you coming on today's show and giving us a behind the scenes look at what goes into this trade. It's been my pleasure, Stu. Now here are some key points to help summarize today's show. If you or somebody you know is interested in a career as a painter or any of their allied trades, contact your local district council for more information. Next, if you're interested in learning more about any of the building trades, be sure to visit the annual Careers in Construction Day held each year in March. And finally, when you look at the beautiful stained door in your house, or that perfectly finished wall at the mall, or even the glass you might be looking out of at school, remember, it's the painters and allied trades who help make everything you see look good. Well, we're all out of time for this week's show. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time on Today's Home Remodeler. For more information about today's topic and upcoming episodes of Today's Home Remodeler, please visit these websites. Cut. The preceding program was sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network.